Hi, this is Snehal Patel, and we are at NMB 2017 in the Zeiss booth, and we're talking about CP3s today because it's been, there's been a lot of big buzz about the CP3 lenses. Um, here's one of them right now. The CP3s are the Compact Pine 3. This is the successor to the CP2, and this lens actually is smaller and lighter than its, than its predecessor with a front diameter of 95 and rings that are dampened so that they don't get rough when there's cold weather or, weather or anything like that, and they're really smooth for follow focus systems. And both the iris and the focus rings have been improved. The construction, of course, there's less girth. It's a little bit smaller, the lens. Still has interchangeable mounts, so you can see this is an EF version of the lens. Um, you could interchange the mounts just like you could with the CP2s. It has a, a port at the bottom, which is actually for lens support, and that used to be connected to your, your mount, which actually put it too close to the body of the camera. This actually puts it further out, so you could use any kind of lens support uh, if you needed to for the, for the lens, which is nice because when you're especially using it for drone applications where there's a lot of vibrations, it's nice to hold the lens into place. Um, the, Construction of the optics is a little bit different um, in the sense that the 18 is brand new, the design. The lenses now have better uh, coatings and better paint inside for more micro contrast, so you get more levels of contrast. And it results in an image that has less chromatic aberration, is perceptually sharper for higher resolution um, sensors, and actually gives you more levels of contrast in the darks and the lights. So there's a difference between the CP2 lenses and the CP3. If you put them head to head, you are going to start to see it. I mean, it's splitting hairs, but it's pretty close, but you'll definitely see an, um, an improvement, especially if you look for it, if you know what to look for with the CP3. Uh, what, what the best part about it that I think is, is that the consistency in the T-stops, because in cinematography, you don't want to have to keep relighting the set with double or quadruple the lighting just to get your most extreme shots, like your most extreme wides or your most extreme telephotos. And if you want to use that kind of focal lens creatively, it's nice when there's consistency in the T-stops. So out of the 10 lenses, three of them, the 15, 18, and 21, all are at T29. And then the rest of the focal lengths from 25 all the way to 135, 25, 28, 35, 50, 85, 100, 135, all of them are T21. So very, very consistent in that sense. All of them are full frame. So you can use this on the largest of sensors, up to a vision, vision size sensor. Uh, and the construction and quality resembles more of an ultra prime feel than that of a CP2. But that's not all. So there's even more exciting stuff. Aside from the fact that this lens will cost just about the same as what a CP2 did, and it will be available, which is a CP3 XD. XD stands for extended data. And the extended data version, you not only have a data connecting uh, connector over here where the PL mount is, you also have an extra data connector on the external side so that you can use this either with the camera that has um, data information that can capture, or if it can't, then you could use an external device or box or monitor or something else. So with the XD version of the lens, you have the data coming out externally as, a, as well as internally. So over here, we actually have a demonstration where we've used the ambient uh, timecode box, which is the Master Locket Plus over here, externally on the camera. We plug in the cable so we have data coming into the ambient box. And this uh, Master Locket Plus is actually transmitting lens data information wirelessly. So aside from the typical focus and iris data that you would normally get, we're also providing you distortion and shading data frame by frame in real time. That means if you look at these numbers over here, or these green numbers, you'll notice that when I turn the focus ring, the distortion data changes. And if I turn the iris ring, the shading data changes. So you can realize that when you're recording your video, you can actually save this data frame by frame. And, and this is right now uh, Palm Fritz Live Grade. And this will be a free upgrade for anyone that owns Live Grade. But basically, um, in live grade, you can actually see the distortion and shading uncorrected and corrected and see for yourself what you're doing. And you can save the data points, or if you have silver stack, you can actually take the data points for the whole clip according to time code, and you can save it with the video file. And then we have a plug-in for Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve, which allows you to then go in and actually apply the shading and distortion correction so that you can actually see uh, a flattened out image and that one that doesn't have any shading. Well, why would you need that? Well, in VFX, a lot of times, uh, whenever you do green screen or any kind of 
knock ground, knocking out their background or set extensions even, or special effects in general where you're tracking stuff, you always have to shoot these charts that are for distortion and then you also have shading charts. They use the characteristics that you get from the charts to modify what the image looks like um, coming from the camera. So we're getting rid of the need for charts altogether because I'm going to get the data automatically through the lens. Now right now we might be getting the data externally through a box, but in the near future you're actually going to get data through the camera itself. So right now if I plug this lens into an Arri Alexa Mini or any Alexa Plus camera, I'm going to see focus and iris data, and the name of the lens, serial number, all that stuff, and I'll see the focus and iris data changing in real time, <laughs> but I'm not yet going to see the shading and distortion data, but all the uh, camera manufacturers have to do is activate that information, which is already saved in a certain column of database, and then they'll be able to record that information as well. So this information is going to be available in many different ways. It's going to be ubiquitous. We already have an end-to-end solution uh, because we're showing you in pre-visualization, on set, and also in post how you can make use of this data, already have the software uh, partnerships to make it happen, and in the future we'll have even more software partnerships, so more of your editing softwares, compositing softwares will be able to make use of this data instantaneously. So to show you uh, what we've done and how we've done it, we have actually have a film that is a proof of concept of how everything works. And it's this little sci-fi film that you should watch that shows you exactly, with the BTS, shows you exactly how we've gone in, had a situation where we had a big green screen area. We went out and did panoramic uh, plates, shot uh, video plates, and then unshaded and undistorted them so that we can stitch them all together and then put that behind the green, uh, where the green screen is. And then on set with the actors, we also unshaded it and undistorted their performance as well marry the two together with compositing. Once the composite image was complete, we were able to take the data points that we had of the original shot and put it back onto the final image. That way, not only does the green screen uh, effect look more natural, but if I'm going from a close-up of somebody down back to a wide with the special effects shot, the two shots don't look different from one another. They feel almost exactly the same and in terms of like the look, the feel of it, because you're getting the lens characteristics back in to make it look more natural. So take a look online, take a look at our website, zeiss.com forward slash cine. You're gonna see all the information about the new CP3s and it's very exciting. And I hope that the community really tries them out and we're really excited to see what kind of footage you guys come up with. Thank you.